Hey guys, welcome to a new video and the beginning of a new project that I am very, very excited about. Ever since I started to learn how to sew, and even actually before that, way before that, one of my biggest dreams has been to own slash make, preferably, my own 18th century gown. I think I'm ready. Why not? <laughs> I've made a wedding dress. I think I'm ready to make an 18th century gown. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this journey together with you. I'm gonna let you come along in every single step of this process and we're gonna work from the inside out. So I am going to start by making 18th century underwear, which means a chemise, bum pad, <laughs> and of course, stays. I'm very, very nervous about the stays, but also really excited. I think I might be able to do it. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and see how it ends up, what happens. I have talked before about how my ultimate 18th century dress is actually a fictional dress, being Elizabeth Swann's wedding dress from Pirates of the Caribbean 2, and one day I will get there, but I don't think that is a good place to start. I'm gonna start with a fairly simple dress and I'm gonna start by just following a pattern so that I can learn how 18th century garments work, all the elements that I need to understand in order to one day be able to draft my own and recreate, hopefully, Elizabeth Swann's wedding dress. So I chose this pattern right here. This is Simplicity 8161 and it is one of the patterns in collaboration with American Duchess, which I hope makes it so that it has a semblance of historical accuracy. But I do have to say before we jump into this project that historical accuracy is not a top priority for me in this project. I honestly really just want to understand the basics of 18th century garment construction before I move on to, or dive deeper into the subject. This, these are my very first steps into the realm of historical costuming in general. Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna, Take it nice and easy, start slow, baby steps. This is the pattern, it is gorgeous. I do prefer this type of more simple dress over the very elaborate French court ones. That is why I chose this one. So that's what I'm gonna make. And I have the undergarments pattern here as well. And this is actually what I'm going to start with. But of course, there's a little twist because I didn't want to just make an 18th century dress. I wanted this first step into historical dressmaking to be very me. So I have decided that I am going to make an entire 18th century outfit using only fabrics from Ikea. <laughs> I am a huge Ikea fangirl. I mean, just take one look around my house, you will know. And I really, really like Ikea's fabric that they sell. I have used their fabric for dresses before, loved it and I think they make absolutely gorgeous prints and their fabric is super affordable. So last time I went to Ikea, last week, I came home with three types of fabrics. So the first thing I got is this and I just took the entire bolt because this is the stuff that I use to make mock-ups. This is their unbleached cotton. Um, it is extremely inexpensive. This is two euros. Per meter. So yeah, I just took the entire bolt. Wasn't that much, by the way, just a little over four meters left. But this is what I'm gonna use for mock-ups. I definitely want to mock up the corset. We'll see whether I need to mock up anything else, but definitely for the corset. Maybe even I might be able to use this for the final corset as well, although I think I might need something more sturdy. But in any case, that's what I got. Then I got this white cotton for the undergarments. This came in at 3.99 per meter. It's just a beautiful white 100% cotton. So that should be perfect to make my chemise and my bum pad with. And then for the actual dress, this. I hope this is a fitting fabric to make it with, but I love it. It has tulips all over. I absolutely adore it. I think it is gorgeous. I love the colors. I love the print. And this is what I want to make my dress out of. I will need a contrasting fabric to go with this because um, there are two tones to this dress. But I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Yeah, this is my setup. This is what I'm gonna do the next couple of weeks, 
months. Who knows how long this will take to make, but I am very excited and very ready to get started. In the spirit of easing into this and baby steps, I'm gonna start by actually just making the chemise. And that is what we're doing today. A chemise is a type of underdress, basically just underwear. It's what you would wear as the bottom layer to all of your clothes. So it goes underneath the stays, underneath the dress as well. And then the ruffles actually peek out from under the dress too. You can tell in the photos here. So that's gonna be the first step. First thing that I make should be fairly simple. So let's get started. Progress is being made. I have the beginnings, very early beginnings of a chemise ready here. The shoulder seams are stitched together and I am now about to start working on the neckline, meaning the ruffle and the facing are gonna go in now. I'm really excited to see how this will turn out. I think even just having this, it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, ruffle, one long strip of rectangle. Let's go. <laughs> The neckline is ready, all ruffled with a drawstring pulled through it, so I am ready to start working on the sleeves. I made an underwear. Hey! <laughs> Feels kind of silly showing this off like this, but obviously this is step one of a much more extensive process and something that definitely needs to be done because you need the proper undergarments in order to make any type of historical clothing work. Yeah, my 18th century chemise, here it is. I actually, I really like it. It is super comfortable. I love the armpit gussets. It has these kind of like, can you tell? Let me get up close a little bit more. There's this triangle underneath the armpits that makes you super mobile and able to move your arms all the directions, which is incredible and amazing and very different from all the vintage stuff that I've made that barely allows you to lift your arms at all. 
love this. I really like the ruffles. I like that I will be able to see the ruffles in the end result. <laughs> It's nice, it's comfortable. It was uh, really easy to make. Instructions were pretty clear and I am just very happy to have the first part of this project already done. I really hope you enjoyed this, guys. I am so excited to get started. I really hope you will follow along on this journey with me of making an 18th century dress. If you enjoyed this video as a little preview of that, then be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the rest of the series, as well as lots of other beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and sewing content. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there are links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!